What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing well. So it has been about a month now since the launch of Ryzen 7. And after all the reviews and articles and videos have gone up, we can pretty much conclude that when you're talking strictly about gaming, something like the Core i7 7700K from Intel, their flagship KB Lake chip, outperforms the Ryzen 7 stack uh, most of the time. Now, there are, of course, certain exceptions to this rule, but for the most part, the 7700K reigns supreme when you're talking about purely gaming. So what we're here to do today is to see if that tide sort of shifts or changes at all if we throw live encoding into the mix. So today we're gonna be streaming out three AAA games at ultra settings uh, at a couple different base resolutions to see if perhaps when the system is tasked with live encoding, if the 1700, for example, that we're gonna be testing today can eventually pass up the 7700K in terms of gaming performance as the 7700K might struggle a bit more since it does have fewer cores and threads at its disposal to handle live streaming. But we're gonna find out what kind of impact streaming has on either of these platforms today. So that should be kind of interesting. Uh, here's a quick look at the rest of the testing hardware. You can see that we've got some overclocks running on these CPUs as well. The 1700 was pushed to 3.9 gigahertz with the 7700K hitting 4.9. Would have loved to hit five gigahertz, but we didn't quite have the thermal dissipation we needed with that Hyper 212X Turbo, as it is a smaller air cooler tower. You can also see we've got a GTX 1070 Founders Edition running stock for both systems. So that is a constant between our platforms today, and that is running the latest Wickle Driver 378.92 on Windows 10 64-bit. As far as our streaming settings are concerned, I fired up OBS Studio and dialed in a 3500 kilobit per second bitrate, and I'm also using the fast preset of the X264 software encoder. Also, the streaming output resolution and frame rate that we're going to be using for all of these tests are 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames per second. As far as base resolutions, though, the base resolutions that the, the user is natively gaming at, we're actually going to be testing two of those, 1920 by 1080 and 2560 by 1440. I would imagine that these are two very popular resolutions that a lot of live streamers like to game at, which is why I'm testing both of them today. Here we have Doom at the base resolution of 1080p, and the way these charts are gonna work is that the upper half is gonna represent gaming performance, whereas the lower half of the chart represents uh, gaming while streaming. And you can see uh, the, the top half, when we're just talking about gameplay here, the 7700K does pull ahead of the 1700 by a small margin, which is pretty expected. And then once we actually kick in the streaming aspect of things, uh, the 7700K still does pull ahead of the 1700, and uh, you can actually see that there's a performance dip across both CPUs. Um, I, would, I would even say that the 1700 takes a larger hit, a slightly larger hit than the 7700K, which is pretty interesting. Doom isn't a super CPU heavy uh, game, so the 7700K still has quite a few resources at its disposal, even though we are streaming out at 1080p. Moving up to a base resolution of 1440p, when we're strictly gaming, the performance gap closes in a bit simply because we're now a little bit more GPU bound than we once were at 1080p and that's why we see the, the 1700 uh, almost staying neck and neck with the 7700k but not quite. We can also see the performance gap start to close when we're streaming however it just seems that this game isn't quite demanding enough on the CPU for the 1700 to actually pull ahead of its Intel counterpart. Now this graph here sort of illustrates the impact of streaming on performance with either CPU at both base resolutions, uh, and that's reflected as a percentage. So obviously lower is going to be better on this particular chart. And you can see the 7700K just does a bit better overall than the 1700 at both resolutions. Uh, the 1700 really struggled with 0.1% and 1% lows, especially at 1080p, it didn't do so hot there. Obviously it was still an enjoyable and, and smooth experience overall, but based on the numbers here, we can see the 7700K actually has an easier time streaming Doom at either resolution. Let's see if things change at all in GTA 5 at 1080p. Once again, we see the 7700K pull ahead of the 1700 when we're just gaming. However, when we start streaming, you can notice that the 1% and 0.1% lows are a lot more evenly matched now between both chips. And in fact, the 0.1% lows of the 1700 actually beat out the 7700K here. And that could maybe partially be explained by the fact that GTA 5 is a heavily threaded and heavily uh, CP, CPU intensive game, um, which could mean that the 7700K is sort of struggling to juggle both the game and live encoding on the fly. Now at 1440p, the frame rates are nearly identical between both chips when we're simply gaming, and that's again likely due to some element of GPU bottlenecking from cranking up that resolution. But when we switch over to streaming, notice how the 1% and 0.1% lows of the 1700 are now 
clearly overtaking the 7700K and uh, by, by a sizable margin, actually. And even though the average frame rates of our Ryzen chip aren't quite up to snuff with the 7700K, we're still seeing an overall smoother experience in theory because we're having uh, some tighter frame times and average frame rates. The gap between those three figures is much closer together than they are on the 7700K. So this is definitely a huge point for the Zen architecture in this particular test. Now, the overall performance hit when streaming in GTA 5 certainly looks a bit different than it did in Doom, with the 7700K incurring nearly a 40% performance penalty uh, at both resolutions with its 1% lows, which uh, is definitely going to add a bit of perceptible choppiness to the user experience. Even its average FPS at 1080p uh, was, was sort of lagging behind the 1700, taking a 29% performance hit as, as compared to the 1700's 25. At 1440p, there's really no comparison here, with the Core i7 taking some massive hits to its 1% and 0.1% lows. 0.1% lows at 52% performance degradation when streaming. It simply does not keep up or handle itself nearly as well as the 1700 in GTA 5. The last game we tested was Battlefield 1, and at 1080p, we see the 7700K once again beating out the 1700 when we're just gaming, it's business as usual. Kick in the streaming though, and we actually see the average frame rate of the 1700 pull ahead of the 7700K for the first time, with 103 FPS versus the 101 that the Core i7 was able to achieve. And look at those 1% and 0.1% lows, just a staggering difference. To validate these numbers, I triple checked my settings and ran these tests again and again three or four times, just to make sure that they were accurate, and time and again, we were seeing these numbers pop up within 1-3% to variance. So these are accurate, these are numbers, this is how the 7700K performs under the pressure of live encoding. Switching over to 1440p, we see the trend continue as the 1700 delivers superior 1% and 0.1% lows, and the 7700K is just displaying frames on screen a bit longer and a bit more frequently than the 1700, indicating that it's a slightly more choppy and less fluid experience overall even though it might be marginal, it still is suffering, uh, based on the data, quite a bit more than its Ryzen rival when it comes to streaming Battlefield 1. And if we take a look at the performance hit percentages here, we can just see how much the 7700K starts to drop off when streaming this game. With its 1% lows, I mean, incurring a 49% performance penalty at 1080p and a 37% hit at 1440p, uh, just kind of devastating blows here. 0.1% lows are even worse. Granted, those aren't gonna be nearly as noticeable in game as 1% lows are. They're still quite devastating. And you compare that to the tighter groupings that the 1700 is able to achieve with its average and 1% lows, uh, it's just a a phenomenal victory here for the 1700 and perhaps the Ryzen 7 family as a whole. So to kind of sum up all the data that we have here, whether or not the 1700 outperforms the 7700K when live streaming heavily depends on the game engine itself and how it interfaces with the CPU architecture, its cores and threads, and so forth. But what we did see on several occasions is that in certain titles that were heavily CPU intensive, like GTA 5 or Battlefield 1, the 1700 in many instances actually pulls ahead of the 7700K when it comes to frame times and also delivers an overall more fluid uh, perceptibly fluid experience for the user just based on the tighter groupings of those frame rates overall compared to the 7700K, which further validates uh, my earlier claims that the Ryzen 7 stack is a better value per dollar than Katie Lake is when it comes to heavily multi-threaded applications that go beyond the scope of just gaming. Whether you're talking about rendering, encoding, live encoding, streaming, and things like that, um, Ryzen 7 is really showing some great promise in those areas. And it's also very exciting because it's still really early on for good old Ryzen. We're still waiting for the Zen architecture to be put into the hands of more game developers so that they can further optimize their game code and uh, deliver higher performance on the AM4 platform when it comes to a lot of these AAA titles. So that's super exciting. There's a lot more to come, more testing to be done for sure, but uh, that's, that's what I got for you guys for now. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Be sure to toss me a like on it if you did, and feel free to leave your thoughts about this these results today in the comments below i'd love to hear all about them but have a good one guys i will see y'all in the next video peace